The CDBG program can be used in a variety of ways to improve people's quality of life by creating suitable living environments. Some common types of projects include improving community facilities such as senior centers or neighborhood centers. The Germantown community is really a community that's so diverse. There were a lot of years prior to that that people didn't feel part of the fabric of this community. They felt like they didn't have a voice, they didn't feel part of something. And when this community center came to their new home, it opened up a whole new set of, of, of a whole new set of ideas for people, a whole idea of hope that it could be theirs, it belongs to this community. You see how it changes people's lives? Like, because people don't think about it, but how many, how many people are, go hungry, and how many people have food on their table because of this place. I'd be a fool to not want to be a part of that. CDBG eligible public services include providing employment opportunities to persons with disabilities, child care services, or food programs. The most rewarding things that I've found so far is just being there for them, kind of being an ear to listen because some of them, they really don't have somebody at home. Low income communities may use CDBG to install basic infrastructure or to upgrade infrastructure in low income neighborhoods. Three of the many communities who identified gaps in the living environment of their low-income residents and creatively used CDBG to craft a solution are Quincy, Massachusetts, Indio, California, and Loudoun County, Virginia. The story of the Minette Community Health Center is of a grassroots movement to open a small clinic in an underserved area with CDBG funds that has grown into a sophisticated health facility over time. That's why we're here. It started here about 30 years ago. Uh, or 35 years ago by a group of people who found that there were patients who had no access to care and uh, were voiceless or disenfranchised. Activism and um, organization came together here to uh, share this city facility that is used as a neighborhood center to create a community health center uh, adjacent uh, uh, to um, be the access point for those who either had no insurance or had no access to care and who were using emergency rooms or not seeking care at all. If Manet was not here, there would be a huge gap in um, the medical care. Um, approximately 50,000, we, we've had about 50,000 visits in the last year. And so that would be, um, and, and I, I wanna say about 5,000 5, or more patients um, that come to um, House Neck and so there, uh, it, would, it would make it much more difficult for patients to um, have access to primary care if we were not here. I come from a town of population 800. Um, uh, coming to this community health center gives me a sense of community. Um, they know who I am. Uh, that's important to me. On the other side of the country, in the desert community of Indio, the city was concerned about older neighborhoods lacking some basic amenities and feeling overlooked. They created the Better Neighborhoods program to have residents choose the CDBG improvements that would make the most difference in their neighborhood, then work with a team of city departments to make it happen. Our major challenge is number one is our old aging infrastructure. In 2010, when the Better Neighborhoods program uh, was introduced, it made absolute sense to us that we needed to start investing into our most poor neighborhoods. We looked around at what other cities were doing. Uh, we looked at the needs of our community and we felt that we had to engage the community more than what we had been doing in the past. And so the Better Neighbors program kind of embarks on this uh, approach that, uh, uh, that relies on citizen involvement, uh, going into the neighborhoods and engaging the residents in the process. In this process, uh, we have taken the decision making even in past the local electeds and, and city staff to the residents themselves. They make the decisions in their communities what they want, what they want to see and what they want to invest in uh, through our CDBG dollars and city dollars that are used um, to bring these projects uh, to fruition. Burn neighborhood chose a park as their top priority. It brings a lot of the kids together to have somewhere to go 
and you know they have to they, two it helps that they 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 can show respect towards it and this is the thing where they're 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 contributing to their own neighborhood by you know uh, joining together and playing and they can participate with each other on a united type of situation Valencia neighborhood focused on sidewalks along with some park upgrades doesn't seem like a big deal a sidewalk but it makes a huge difference to the people that are actually using it you know, and to stay out of the cars and traffic. Neighborhood cleanups are a part of each neighborhood's package. Once you clean up an area in a neighborhood, the sense of pride in the residents is, is really amazing. They, they start to keep their yards cleaner. They start to take more pride in ownership of what they have. So it's, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it really is. In Loudoun County, Virginia, four different homeless shelters were facing issues both from environmental contamination and from the lack of coordinated services. So the county used CDBG funds in support of a new centralized full-service homeless center. Here in uh, Loudoun County, there's been a, a growing need for providing uh, a place of refuge as a place of stability for the homeless. This is a wonderful um, facility for that to, because of the increase in the population, there's, there's more space and there's more, more programming and more case management to help them get back on their feet. Loudoun is unique because it is in many ways. We're the, one of the fastest growing communities and we're also one of the richest communities, um, which for the homeless population doesn't always, um, that's not a positive thing because we are actually overlooked in many um, grant opportunities because we are seen as a wealthy community. So we lose out on, on grant dollars sometimes because of that. One of the things that we can say we do well is collaborate with community partners. Um, and we do have a um, quarterly meeting that we have here with all the stakeholders that are involved with the shelter. And we just added some more people in. Like we have representatives from family services. We have representatives from mental health. We have um, family, um, Volunteers of America, of course, are at the table, and we really talk about, you know, what are the issues that we need to address, what's working well, what's not working well, and those are really the same partners that came together when we had a need um, to shelter, and what would work here, what wouldn't, just the layout of the shelter. In creating a suitable living environment, the goal is to make improvements that are sustainable over time. The key to enduring impact is the creation of strong partnerships, as in our three sample projects. The project is, is a wonderful example of coordination of, uh, of different organizations and, and uh, different funding sources. Um, the county, of course, initiated the, um, the idea of a new facility and then, um, then of course there was some there was a gap in some funding um, then, and CDBG was able to uh, come forward and provide some of that gap funding and then in addition we uh, once the facility was actually uh, built then um, we've got a, a management company through through a, a nonprofit contracting with with the county to provide the management services and then we've got other agencies providing case management um, you know, providing emergency kind of assistance. Uh, the city recognized that in order to create this positive change, we had to involve all the departments. Like we've mentioned, public works, uh, our engineers, uh, code enforcement, our, our po uh, police department, uh, animal enforcement, um, you know, housing, um, community development, just, just the whole gamut of uh, programs and services that are available uh, within the city. Uh, you can't do it without that, uh, that partnership, that collaboration. One of the things that the Department of Public Health has been able to do in our partnership with MANA is leverage some of the capital investments that are made through the Community Development Block Grant, for example, by putting our investments into programmatic activities that sort of sit on the cornerstone of the capital investments that are made through CDBG. And because of that leveraging of those funds, we really are able to make inroads into improving community health, and it's, it's a great partnership. The results are a better quality of life for residents over decades. They re recognize that this is a low income area and we don't have that, uh, that uh, opportunity to drift off and go to other neighborhoods and say, hey, we're gonna upgrade ourselves and move on. We have to have it here. And this is one, one thing we did recognize that the city and the government planning uh, did recognize and we appreciate that. I have two, 
two cancer operations in my throat and I, it was radiation and I have one in my lung. And I have a, a few spots of, of cancer, skin cancer. The only reason I'm telling you this, I have an appointment here in House Neck and I'm gonna get my skin cancers treated. They have a cancer freezing machine in How's Neck. Can you believe that? I can't believe it. From what, you know, what we tried to do in the beginning, what we had to work with, to have a machine like that, that's incredible. That's when they bought grant monies. No doubt about it. Thank you um, for giving us this opportunity and for um, just having, uh, having been able to receive, being on the receiving end of, of CDBG funds is huge. Um, not just for our residents that are here now, but for the ones that are to come.